Welcome back, Guardians. I'm full of emotion. This is the final week for the Veil Containment Law. And it it's a bit disappointing. And that disappointment has then been uh, stamped out a little bit by um, Joe's, the game director for Destiny's, uh, tweet and video about state of the game and uh, addressing a lot of things that the community might want. I'm not too sure if I'm going to make a video about it, but just to let you know, it's been a bit of an exciting morning. But what you're probably interested in is hearing what happened in Vale Containment this week and if there's any juicy lore. <sighs> Spoiler, not really. I'm going to show you the video. I'm going to give you a couple theories about what's going on with Veil Containment. I'm going to do some criticisms of the Veil Containment structure overall. And if I've got the time and the energy, I'm going to give you 14 weeks of lore summarized. So if you haven't watched all the Veil Containment, this is going to be the video for you as well. Hopefully. Okay, so this is this week's Veil Containment lore. Years ago, back on Venus, the Vex simulated copies of us, Maya and I, trapped in a virtual hell. After so long, even hell can look like heaven, can't it? <laughs> I'm tired. I'm done. Maya has to be out there. The Maya I remember. And all I want is one more moment with her. To hold her in my arms. Tell her that I love her. So she can tell me to hush one more time. If... If we learned anything from the Veil, it's that eventually... We all have to learn to let go. So, I made contact with the Vex. I'm ready. And it's time to say goodbye. In the end, Maya Sandarish was consumed by her desire to understand and her inability to let go. She and Chioma lost everything in pursuit of knowledge. Chioma abandoned it all. Sought to wipe the slate clean for future generations. What did we learn from all of this? That the veil is darkness. The power of consciousness made manifest. As much as the traveler is the light. The power of the physical world. The implications are great. But so too are the risks. As a younger man, I may have fallen into the same trap Maya did. But now I know better. We must proceed with caution. Lest the river sweeps us away. Right, so at first I was very disappointed with this. I was like, this doesn't answer any questions. But the more I think about it, the more I think this is wrapping. Well, oh. okay, there's a couple ways to think about this. One is Maya Sundaresh is kind of being set up as a Vex villain. And I think all these Veil containments kind of lead in that direction. That's one interpretation. Uh, because her Vex copies are out there, the Lakshmi 2 copies out there, so that kind of works. And we know that Bungie kind of has a problem with telling Vex stories because they're just robots, evil robots, and they're, they're difficult to have interesting characters with, and they're often just used by other characters in Destiny. So Maya would, I think, be a fantastic Vex villain. The interpretation I also have for this week is that Chioma Essie was reaching back out to find the version of Maya that she fell in love with, which was would have been M Sun 12, because the previous week it said M Sun 12 was in the data, right? And obviously this week it mentioned that they realized uh, she was talking about her previous experiences 
um, with the VEX simulations. So she may have realized, oh, you know, there is still a virtual copy of Maya Sundaresh out there before she was corrupted by the Veil in the VEX network. So then she reached out to the VEX um, in hope to talk with M Sun 12, the Maya she fell in love with, and to say goodbye. So that that's kind of almost closing this chapter of Maya Sundaresh and Geo Essie. But part of me also thinks Maya could make a really good Vex villain. Right. So, <laughs> did the narrative experiment work? Remember, this was a narrative experiment. They they talked about this in the media roundtable. Um, actually, I'll, I'll let you. I'll, I'll read this for you. Uh, they said Brooks points to the Veil containment as a key for shattering reservoir, which continues the examination of the cosmic thingamajig called the Veil, and quietly hints at a lot of stuff to come for season exp and expansions. Maya Sundaresh is a Vex villain, calling it now. He says this trail of breadcrumbs is the way we're experimenting with a new narrative delivery system to tell different kinds of stories to shake things up a little bit from what people have been expecting. I would say that the experiment was a failure. I really think that the breadcrumb and the drip fed, fed trail does not give this story justice because I actually think this story is pretty good. And I actually think this story should have been a live fall. Um, just to hit a couple of topics, it, it gave explanation for the creation of Neomuna. It gave explanation for how the Vex hit it. It talked about the Vex trying to get uh, paracles or powers from the Veil. It talks about extracting psychic data from the Veil. It it linked Future War Cult, the device, Maya Sundaresh, uh, Lakshmi 2 reveal. Like, this story is actually pretty good. Um, and I don't think it worked out. It got chopped up into lots of pieces and delivered over 14 weeks. And if you actually go back and watch it every week back to back, it's actually super interesting. So I don't think this was a great way to deliver the content. I think the story is actually not bad there in regards to Chioma Essie and Maya Sundaresh. However, uh, the way it's delivered, I don't think it's particularly good. Um, and... I don't really think it's an experiment. We, we are kind of used to this kind of narrative uh, drive from the way seasons are delivered because the seasons are delivered every week as well. So I don't think this is anything crazy. I think what what would have been an experiment is putting it into one really good story mission. That kind of would have been an experiment for Bungie. Um, I think it was also not received well because a lot of people didn't even know about it i can't remember when it happened maybe week five week six i think i made a video and i actually showed where it was on the map and all these people responded with huh i didn't even know this existed what what is this doing like i didn't realize this was a thing i should be doing so it wasn't front and center and i think that's a shame that people missed out in the story and the other comment and criticism I have for the Veil Containment Law is I was kind of expecting it to be really filling in some of the gaps for Lightfall about the Veil. And it didn't really do that. It confirmed what we already knew about the Veil, which was it was a reservoir for the collective consciousness of the universe. And it didn't add anything more than that. It told us about Savathun hiding it on Neomuna, which we already knew. And then the story was really about Chioma Essie and Maya Sundarish, which I actually think is a good bloody story. So I don't think it delivered... If their goal was to contain interest, like expand upon the Veil lore, I don't think it achieved that goal either. I also think it fell flat when it comes to their comments on seasons being very cohesive and connected. They made a big point of this in the sort of media round table that each season was going to be connected to each other and it was going to be more connected than any previous season and really build up to this finale for the final shape. And this kind of once again left on a bit of a flat note. Like it just, it didn't really explain M Sun 12, although we can theorize about it. It, it just 
kind of left it up in the air again and i don't i think if the experiment was to show how all these seasons are connected together and to feed into this bigger overarching narrative leading up to final shape it didn't quite deliver on that either so those are my criticisms of the veil containment law now if you'll if you've <laughs> missed 14 weeks i'm going to give you the the shortest version summary of 14 weeks of veil containment law okay so week one is we we hear the basic chairman se and Maya Sundaresh are heading to niamuna this is just post the collapse we actually have a bunch of law on this already that i've made previous videos on they escape on exodus indigo they head to niamuna following the signal uh, a vex signal which is um by soteria right week one reinforces that that's what's happened uh it also introduces the idea that Maya Sundaresh predicted the collapse in the future and she did this through the future war cult device which she previously developed right the ishtar collective uh then developed a vex algorithm to protect the data now this could be a callback to the very final week because we know chioma essie contacts the vex and maybe she used that to also encrypt her data as well okay so when you watch it in its entirety week one might actually link back to week 12. week two they introduced the veil and they reinforced that Savathun planted it there on Niamuna and even said the idea that maybe she planted it for Ishtar Collective which kind of feeds into my theory about Maya being like a Vex villain like I don't know there's lots of things that connect together there with the veil Ishtar Collective the Vex and Maya Sundaresh week three they build the enclosure around the veil to study and research it uh, and it actually confirms that they have Siva this is kind of what I was expecting to be in Lightfall, like the creation of Neomuna and how they use Siva and if they had Siva and how they used it. Week four, uh, the Vex want to get access to the Veil, um, but they can't because of its power causality. They try to insert themselves into history and they, uh, uh, they do a little bit of that, but they, they can't achieve their goals week five you we get a bit of the exo law how exos are created from vex radiolaria and clarity and how they're overloaded when they come in too much contact with the veil and maya wants to reverse engineer this to fabricate consciousness week six they introduces the idea of nimbus being half vex and pretty much establishes or some law on on advanced siva and quicksilver for near Muna. they talk about combining siva and vex components and exo mines and my theory is that leads to quicksilver which then is what's used to um uh oh it's it's early in the morning it's what's used to modify cloud stratus week seven they design this orchestra and this is to extract data from the veil this is the whole conductor and the uh chorus and how they sort of channel information out of the veil which then becomes important in week eight um the whole research team is killed trying to do this experiment sort of extracting psychic data from the veil and uh Maya Sundaresh is like oh this is valuable data points so kind of worth it and they mentioned that this is similar to what happened to the witness all these like uh researchers being combined into one week nine introduces the idea that lakshmi 2 is a projection of maya sundaresh like a copy of maya sundaresh that she basically imprinted using this technology uh from the veil she imprinted herself onto lakshmi 2 making a an incomplete copy week 10 they are successful in connecting people to the veil we don't really know what that means and what that involves but they just say that they're successful in connecting people to the veil they confirm the veil is a web of consciousness and that the vex want the veil so they can run power causal simulations which matches our previous law on the vex that they they can't simulate the light in the dark and um if they could they would just instantly win against guardians and that's why guardians cause so much troubles for the vex 
Week 11, Maya dies. She's found dead in the conductor chair. Nobody knows what she's doing. Dum, dum, dum. This is where I keep coming back to the Maya is going to be a Vex villain of some sort. And confirms that the Lakshmi copy is still incomplete and keeps freaking out Shem Essie. Week 12, Rasputin discover them. And this is when the Nefeli Stronghold storyline comes in. So they send... Uh, Chairman Essie sends Stargazer, uh, a Cloud Strider, back to Earth to delete all the records of Neomuna. She takes Lakshmi 2 with them. That's how Lakshmi 2 gets from Neomuna onto Earth. I think I forgot to mention previously, at one point, they also mentioned how, yeah, week 4, the Vex is the reason Neomuna remained hidden. The Vex made like a simulation to hide Neomuna because they wanted it for themselves, because they wanted to get access to the veil. Week 13, they close down the facility, and we hear that MSUN12 is crawling in the network, and then week 14 is what we just had today, which is, I think, uh, some closure for Chirma Essie to try to reach out to the virtual copy of MSUN12 and reconnect with Maya before she was corrupted by the veil. That is 14 weeks of Veil Containment Law. Thank you for joining. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word, you can leave the word uh, Veil Containment. I'm not too sure if I'm going to make a video on the on Joe's tweet. We'll see. Maybe it'll be a moaning minute. Maybe not. Um, next week will be the showcase. I've got a Kelgaroth video planned as well. I'm sure we'll do a reaction to the showcase and then we'll be in the new season. Okay. Appreciate it. As usual, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I can't even speak. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.